All right, on tonight's episode of Python Poppy, we're back inside our artificial intelligence course, and we're still doing our neural networks module. Let's have a look at what we went over tonight. Now, last night, I did inform you guys that I was going to update the code so I can see if we can actually move that save file to the augv3 position and see what happens if we try to save it there. I got everything queued up, as you can see. I just haven't actually run a code yet to see if it works. So I will do that tomorrow and uh, keep you posted on the update. But tonight was a heavy note-taking night, so we're just going to pick up with some light reading. So that was a look at how we can use convolutional neural networks to begin to solve problems with regards to computer vision to be able to make to be able to take an image and begin to analyze it. So this is the type of analysis we might imagine that's happening in self-driving cars that are able to determine what filters to apply to an image to understand what it is that a user is looking at. Or the same type of idea that can be applied to facial recognition and social media to be able to determine how to recognize faces in an image as well. We can imagine a neural network that instead of classifying into one of 10 different digits can instead classify something like is this person a or is this person b trying to tell those people apart based on convolution and so now what we'll take a look at is yet another type of neural network that is popular with certain types of tasks but to do so we'll try to generalize and think about our neural network a little more abstractly below we have an example of a deep neural network Imagine that all of the nodes are connected by weights. So this is our deep neural network here. You can imagine that all of these nodes are connected by weights. This is our input layer. These are our hidden layers, and this is our output. So we have our initial input layer, which is here, a whole bunch of hidden layers that are performing certain tasks of calculations, or certain types of calculations, sorry, this right here. And then an output layer that generates some sort of output that we care about calculating, this one here. But we could imagine representing this a little more simply using a more abstract representation of our neural network. So here we have our input, our network, and our output. We have some input, which might be a vector of a whole bunch of different values. It gets passed into a network that performs some sort of calculation or computation. And that network produces some sort of output. That output might be a single value. It might be a whole bunch of different values. But this is a general structure with the neural network. This is a general structure of the neural network that we've seen. This is some sort of input that gets fed into the network and using that input, the network calculates what the output should be. And this sort of model for a neural network is what we might call a feed forward neural network. So that's when we're feeding everything forward. Everything flows in one direction. So feed forward neural network, neural networks that has connections in only one direction, like I just stated. It moves from one layer to the next layer to the layer after that. The inputs pass through various different hidden layers and then ultimately produce some sort of output. So feed forward neural networks were very helpful for solving these types of classification problems that we saw before. And we have a whole bunch of input. We want to learn what setting of weights will allow us to calculate the output effectively. But there are some limitations to feed forward neural networks that we'll see in a minute. For instance, the input needs to be a fixed shape or a fixed number of neurons in the input layer. And there's a fixed shape for the output also, like a fixed number of neurons in the output layer. And that has some limitations of its own. A possible solution for this is instead of just a, a feed forward neural network where there are only connections in one direction from left to right effectively across the network, we can also imagine a recurrent neural network where a recurrent neural network generates output that gets fed back into itself as an input for future runs of that model or network. So as with the traditional neural network, we have inputs that get fed into the network, they get fed into the output, and the only thing that determines the output is based on the original input and based on the cal calculations we do inside of the, the network itself. Now this goes in contrast of a recurrent neural network, where in a recurrent neural network, we can imagine output from the network feeding back into itself, into the network again as input for the next time we do the calculations instead of inside of the network. So let me go back up and see if I can try to give you an example of this as you can see here this would be a, like a feed forward this is the feed forward model here but if this was in the current if this was in a recurrent model it would go input network output and the output would actually get fed back into the input to get fed back into the network to get recalculated if that makes any sense to you so that's the difference between the two a feed forward goes strictly one way left to right and that's it it ends the recurrent goes left to right but then it doubles back on itself it gets fed back into the input to get fed back into the network to repeat the process again. Now, that's what we did for the night. Like I said, we took notes. So it was just some light reading for the night. 
maybe tomorrow we'll have something interesting to go over. Like I said, I will run that code to see if we can actually move that AUG v, uh, that AUG V3 to the file name and see what happens with that. If not, we know it works and we know what to do in case it doesn't. But I will keep you guys posted every step of the way. For now, this is the Python Poppy. You guys stay Gucci.